Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Justin Wolf from Wolf Customs. And today I wanted to have a discussion on whether or not your knife should have a scout or a traditional style sheath. A lot of times I get asked, can I make someone a scout carry sheath for a particular knife? And there's a lot of times that I try to tell them, I can make it, yes, but I recommend that you steer clear of scout. And this is the reason why. The anatomy of a knife truly dictates what kind of sheath it can, should, and shouldn't have. And it's what I mean by this. Okay, let's take, let's take a more robust, okay? This more robust, I've had people ask, can I make a scout sheath for it? And my answer is always, yes, I can make you whatever it is that you want. Does it make it right? Not at all. And the reason for that, okay, right here, where we have the handle coming around right here onto the finger guard, you can see how shallow that is. Okay? Now, the reason that's a big deal is your standard size retention strap, and a retention strap is crucial for a scout carry sheath, depending on the knife, of course. The traditional size of leather strap used for a retention on a knife is one inch because of the size of a line 24 snap. Okay? The smallest you can go down to is about three quarters of an inch. So why is that a big deal? Well, you can see when we wrap that around, you can see that this strap actually falls below the guard line, which means over time, you can see that I did that and it just pulled right past. See what I'm getting at? Now yes, I could go down to three quarters of an inch, but that is still very shallow and I would still have a problem with that over time as that retention strap stretched and wore in. So that's a prime example as to why an anatomy of a knife dictates what type of sheath that it should have. This type of knife should have a traditional bushcraft style sheath. Okay. So what kind of knives work extremely well when it comes to scout carry? Well there's a lot of knives, okay, like this custom primal edge knife here. Okay? You can see how deep this is coming up to the guard. Okay? So when I wrap my strap around it, you can see that the guard is quite a bit lower than the strap. So even once the strap really wears in and stretches, it's never going to go past that guard, which will make that a perfect knife, perfect knife for a scout carry. Now on the flip side of the coin, this knife is kind of a horrible knife when it comes to a traditional bushcraft style because there's not a whole lot of, there's nothing to let form. Okay, you can see that it's perfectly round here. So the only place that you have to wet form is this area here, which over time that will wear and this will begin to slide in and out relatively easy. Another couple examples of a knife that will work relatively well is like the Gerber Prodigy. See that the guard goes down fairly steep, fairly deep. And even though the guard is just slightly below, it still will work very well. EK2. 
or a lot of the Beckers, work extremely well for scout. Now before I discourage everybody away from scout carry, let's talk about a few things that we can do to actually make a lot of knives work scout carry, even those that are not necessarily built for a scout. Prime example of this, I mean a prime example, is my Skookum. Okay? The Skookum, as you can see, is very shallow. I mean, this thing pretty much does not have a finger guard at all. But, I would still feel comfortable making a scout carry sheath for this. And why? It's because of this. See those flares right there? How that flares out? It makes wet forming very nice. Okay? Let's say that I wet form that, or this sheath that I've wet formed. You see how it flares right there? Just listen. Hear it just snap into place. This knife, I mean, I have no problem knowing that this knife isn't ever going to go anywhere. Okay? It's just not going to. And that's because of that wet forming right there. Five years from now, that sheath will still click into place just like that, as long as you don't over-treat your leather. A lot of people have a tendency of over-treating their leather when this sheath is on my side every single day. Every single day, all day long. In every single weather element out there. And I only treat this sheath at least once to twice a year. People over-treat their leather, make it soft, make it deteriorate, and everything else. You don't need to do that. All right, so basically is what I'm getting at, is I would avoid a retention strap altogether when it came to a scout carry sheath for this, and I would rely solely on wet forming retention. The same can be done with, say, like a Mora Black, okay? Even though that is fairly deep right there, and I could put a retention strap after I make it a three-quarter strap, I could still do that and it'd still come out really nice. But it's not needed, and I'll show you why. Okay, here's a sheath that I just finished for a customer, and it is for the Mora Black. And you can see the wet forming. I mean, it's just a perfect this knife is just a perfect shape for it. I mean, you can just hear that thing just snap into place. I mean, I could flip this thing around, throw it and everything else all day long, and it's never going to come out. I mean, that's just, it's just designed beautifully. I mean, not only is it very comfortable, but you can make just amazing quality sheaths for this knife, leather and kydex. All right, so is that true for the more robust? Is there a way to make this a scout carry without a retention strap and relying solely on wet forming? And my answer is going to be no. This shape of this knife will eventually wear out where there's virtually no retention when it comes to wet forming at all. It will wear out. But there is a way around it. And the way around it would be this. Let's pretend that this skookum here did not have those flares, okay? And it was just, we had to rely on that shallow part. The way around it is that, is the lanyard hole. And you might be asking yourself, well, what does that have to do with anything? Let me show you. Okay, for me personally, I don't like scout carry. I prefer a cross draw. It's virtually the same thing, carries the exact, except for you're pulling this way and not this way, okay? So, I'm going to use this Laplander sheet as an example. So let's say that this Laplander did not snap into place. All right, let's say that there's no retention there. What's going to keep this thing from just falling out at that point? Nothing. 
except for this and that lanyard hole. Take your lanyard, throw over your sheath like that. Now that saw will only come out that far before that lanyard grabs your belt loop and won't allow it to go any further. You have to do that in order to pull it out. The problem with this is you have to remember to take your lanyard and put it over it. That's all there is to it. If you don't remember to do that, you are at risk at losing your knife. So the reason I did this video is not necessarily to discourage people from scout carry because scout carry can be very fun. I mean, let's face it, you can have your sidearm and your knife on the same side. That's appealing to a lot of people. The reason I did this video is because there are pros and there are cons to a scout carry and I wanted to be able to show people without trying to explain it because trying to explain this is kind of confusing and it's very long winded when it comes to typing. So I figure it's easier to show versus type. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and as always, have a good one.